Hey everybody, Logan here, and today, well, we're talking about something we haven't talked about in ages, and that is the PS Vita. Why, you may say, because apparently it's hit almost a little bit of a renaissance, almost a little bit of a renaissance resurgence. That's what I'm looking for. So this little baby, this is the Vita, I guess you could say the Model 2, and what I decided to basically express in this video is, is it still worth it? Technically, you can still download games. You can still play your games on the PS Vita. The only thing is you can't go out to a store and buy a Vita brand new anymore. Um, that's a shame because there are still plenty of good games. Now, the thing is, this is not compatible with the PlayStation 5 by any means. I even tried it and it just went, did not recognize. Gave me that little blip in the corner and just went, okay. But you can charge your PS uh, Vita on the PS5. Plug it in. That's the only way it works. But uh, the PS Vita was one of the most powerful handhelds until the Switch came out. Visually, it was on par with... Some people say the PS3. Power-wise, spec-wise, no it isn't. But, visually, the game looks great. It has a ton of great games. We're going to go over the games that I have today, and some of the features that the PS Vita still has, and whether or not it's still worth it in the coming year. And, to be honest, I still like my Vita. Do I play it as much? No, mainly because the charging is not as convenient as it should be in you know, 2022, 2023, whenever you're watching this. And that's the only real issue. And it's not really compatible with anything else. And there are no new games technically. But we'll get into that. But this is the PS Vita. Slim. Volume 2. Model 2. Part 2. Whatever you want to call it. This is the blue one. This is my PS Vita. So we're going to take a, a closer look at this. And just determine, like I said, is it still worth it? Welcome to Rip and Data Gaming, the channel where Logan will show you everything. From gameplay to gear, their crew is here to take you on a journey through every atmosphere. Releases to news, you don't have to choose. Rip and Data Gaming is here for you. Okay, so as you guys can see, this is the Vita 2.0 whatever you want to call it, slim, whatnot. Let's hit that screen for the moment. This is the back. Uh, very different, slightly so, kind of very kind of different than the original model. There are my fingerprints all over it. It has a glossy surface. These are uh, the, the little places where you put your hands, and that's the, the touchpad for the standard Vita. Now, we also have right here is where you're... Your memory card goes right in there. You can get a memory card. And mine, I think I have... Do I have the 64? I think I have the 64. Yeah, now these things are really hard to come by at a decent price. I got mine on Amazon a couple of years ago right after I got this one. I shouldn't say a couple of years ago. It's been... Ooh, I want to say it's been about four... Maybe five years since I bought this one. Wow. Holy moly. 2016 or 17. Yeah, something like that. So as you can see, it's got not your Type C, and that is what makes it. I always get these confused. Is that a mini or a micro? I think that's a micro, right? Mini? I don't know. But with it not being Type C, it makes it a little harder to charge. You always got to keep that uh, cable on hand. Uh, people used to have those all the time. Now that everything is pretty much Type C, uh, whether it's your Samsung, your heads, everything's Type C. And I run Samsung phones, so they're all Type C. So that's what I have plenty of. So you still have the little, uh, little notchy things right here where you can put the little uh, strap to hold it around your wrist. I don't have that. Actually, I do have it. I just don't like it on here. Uh, your home button, your start and select, your face buttons, the camera. It still has a camera. Yeah, that was a terrible, terrible camera, but it had a camera nonetheless. Your two joysticks, your D-pad, and your shoulder buttons here. You have your, your volume. Yeah, let's do it this way. You got your power here. Ooh, 
there we go. Come on. There, okay. Uh, your power here, your volume here, and then this is where your cartridge goes. So cartridge there. What do I have here at the moment? I have Sonic and all Sonic All Stars. Sonic and All Stars. Yes, Sonic and All Stars Racing transformed. So the problem is right now PS Vita software is not the easiest to come by because it's going to be a little pricey and since it didn't sell as well as say the DS or the 3DS or what have you there aren't as many copies of the games out there so you can still download games via the PlayStation Network uh, there was going to be a big debacle last year around what was it March, April, May, June, July something like that uh, where Sony was going to shut down the PSP, PS3, and PS Vita marketplaces, and you couldn't download anything. Eventually, Sony wiped that away and said, all right, we'll leave the PS3 and the PS uh, Vita up, but the PSP is no more. That's This is the actual only way you can play your PSP games on modern hardware, or modern-ish hardware, unless you have the PlayStation uh, what was it called? The PlayStation, not the PlayStation Home, PlayStation TV, which I do have. Maybe I'll cover that in, in, in a in a video in the future. But that's actually the only way I can record uh, in, any kind of footage, and it's actually tough to record PlayStation footage on older hardware. So let's take a look at the operating system. As you can see, those are all my PS Vita games that I have on here. And these are all cartridge based. That's why I have them here, except for Mark of the Wolves. Now, what I do is I'm a little, what we'll call it neurotic when it comes to organization. So you can see I have my PS1 games. I have different uh, folders for my PS1 games. I've got a lot of PS1 games. Now, if you ever downloaded them on the PS3, they translated for the most part to your PSP or your PS Vita, which I thought was great. So I also have certain PSP games. Not all your PSP games will be compatible with the PS Vita. Why? I don't know, but reasons. PlayStation Plus games, those will disappear when or if I ever don't have PlayStation Plus anymore or they remove uh, PlayStation Plus or PlayStation Network functionality from the Vita. PlayStation Minis, when those were a thing, these are just random games random uh and then free to play right there so we'll take a look those are a couple of my minis i really like this flying hamster they got gorilla war and akari warriors uh playstation plus as you can see i got a couple of psp games and psv games but those are all playstation plus so if any reason i don't have ps plus anymore these go bye bye or i won't be able to play them if playstation network goes away so uh, meaning off the PS Vita, because I know some people would think, PlayStation Network's never going away. Y you know what I mean, off the console. Uh, those are my PSP games that are compatible. That's it. That's sad that that's all I have. But one of my favorites is Justice League Heroes and the Hot Shots. Love those. So we'll go backwards through my PS PS1 games. As you can see, I got a lot of bangers here. I've always liked the soundtrack in the background too. I was a big fan of that soundtrack. So I think I have more. Yeah. Ah, that's quite a bit of games. And then you go down here. You can still uh, manage your trophies. There's still Netflix. I don't know if it works on here still. I know Netflix services have been discontinued off our, uh, off of a number of uh, hardware, console hardware. It's settings, replace these, your story, your content manager. Content manager. Again, music, photos, videos, what have you. And then you have different apps here. Certain games, certain ones don't work. You got the Welcome uh, Park, which was the initial setup and everything. PS4 link, browser, photos, music. Near, near, unfortunately, doesn't work anymore because that service has been discontinued. But yes, you can still uh, connect it to your PS3 as well. Uh, social net. Friends, messaging, party chat, and email. I don't use email on here, but when it came out, it was a novel uh, feature. So, and that's it. And you can always add another page by doing that. You see that? And you can, uh, the, the cool thing is you can even customize the backgrounds. I don't know if you can see it, how mine change. 
you got a dark blue, you got a light blue, and then you got a, a darker ish blue. I have a thing for, for blue. Yes, it's Red Bandana Gaming. Blue is my favorite color. It just kind of works that way. Don't question it. <laughs> so, you've got a number of games you can still play, things you can get, and you can still download via the PlayStation Network. So, that's always a cool thing. Uh, one good thing, unlike the PSP, you can still connect these to modern uh, networks. What do I mean modern networks? Is if you're if you have a newer router that has Wi-Fi six or something like that, or even the old two point four, the the Wi-Fi bands don't work anymore with the PSPs. So in order to get your games on PSP, especially with a PlayStation Network down, you need to have already have them uh, downloaded onto a memory card or connect your PS three online, download your PSP games or your games that you purchased for the PSP onto your PS3 and then transfer them to the uh, PSP handheld. That's a big pain. That's a topic for another story. But let's put this aside and I'm going to show you a couple of things that I have. Now, this is a shell that I bought for my Vita to protect it. And as you can see, it's blue. Uh, I took it off just for the video so you can see a little more, but this is the shell that I usually keep it in. So let's do that. I'll show you. It just pops right in. Now, I got this shell a few years ago, probably about a year and a half, maybe two years after I got my Blue Vita. Because I saw it at a game store and I went, yeah, let me get that. And it clips right in. And that's what it looks like. So it's got a little bit of a brushed metal look to it. And it gives it a little bit of weight. And if you drop it, it's got a little more impact resistance. So that's my case for it. Well, one of mine. Um, I don't have an actual sling bag or anything. Now, this is one thing I buy uh, on Amazon. These are Unikeep binders. I have them for multiple systems that usually have the handhelds. As you see, it's a video game collection. It's there. And you open them up, and that's where I keep all my Vita games. Yes, because look at that. I could have a lot more Vita games, but I don't. So I, I take all my games out of the cases and then put them in here because it makes it a little easier, especially when I want to grab them and go. So a couple games I don't have the boxes for, and you'll see that in a moment. So that's where I keep those games. So as I find new games, it's been rare that I've been finding new physical games for my Vita. My, my wife is a bigger fan of the Vita. She's got a lot more games than I do. So let me grab these. That's all my physical games that I still have boxes for, which all of these are in here as well. So I got Everybody's Golf 6, which is Hot Shots Golf here in the States. The only, I think that's the only Japanese game I have on the Vita. I have a lot more Japanese games on my PSP. So as you can see, there we go. I've got World of Final Fantasy, which I think I also have on Switch or PS4. I think it's PS4. So great RPGs. That's one thing you're going to find on the Vita. There's a lot of great RPGs. Now, uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. This one has recently gone up in value a little bit, but not too much. This one I've played a few here and there. I'm just not a big fan of the Street Fighter Cross Tekken series or, well, supposed series because it was supposed to be a Tekken Cross Street Fighter, but we see how that happened. Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform. I love racing games. I love kart racing games. And I think this is the best on the Vita, hands down. And it was one of the best of the generation, too. Uh, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, which is the PlayStation version of Super Smash Bros. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. But it wasn't terrible. It was a solid game. Uh, a Lego movie video game. The reason I got this one is... One of the game stops back when I was still living in South Florida, when they were doing their closing thing, it was there. And I just bought whatever Vita games. That's where this one came from, too. I bought both of them at the same time. And they were on clearance for dirt cheap. So that's what I did. I bought it just to have it. Have I ever played it? Nope. Not at all. And the final one, Conception 2. This is actually one of the first games I got with my Vita when I bought the blue one. And it is a JRPG that I've never played. Uh, I was looking for Conception 1, which I do not know what system it was on. I think I found out it was on like PS3 or PSP. So I was like, oh, let me find part one first. Da, 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 da. 
And yeah, never played it, but hey, it's cool to have. But that's all I have physically for my Vita. I know there's a ton out there. It's just they're really been hard to find lately. But if you're looking for a digital focused handheld right now and you want to stay in the PlayStation uh, ecosystem, the Vita is still worth it. Now, the problem is trying to find a Vita in good condition is going to be a little bit of an issue. Now, you can find the older ones, and they're going to be, depending on where you go, uh, around the $200 mark. This is going to be closer to the $300 mark. At one point, this one was $500. But prices have a little, I, I would say, come back down, stabilized a little bit more. So, with that being said, you're looking at a, a $200 price point, uh, give or take, for a Vita, depending on where you're going. Now, depending on when you're watching this, the market could change it could fluctuate so don't go no they're now 150 no they're now 350 it changes as of recording this one this model was sitting at around 280 dollars and that's as of recording and the regular vita was sitting around 180 dollars but things can change so always keep an eye whether you're buying it on ebay your local game store uh, gaming websites, East Starland, stuff like that. There's plenty of websites out there. And there's plenty of places to get them. You can get them at cons. Cons, you might find them a little more expensive because they're right at your fingertips. So just keep an eye out. Do some price checking. Depending on the model that you want. Like I said, this is the Slim uh, Part 2. Slim Vita, Vita Small, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I, I just call it the, the Vita 2. And it, well... The Vita Slim, too. Or, yeah. Yeah. Most people think, oh, there was a second Vita. No, there was no second Vita. This was just a, uh, a slim redesign. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully, this helped you. I think, in summary, I still think the Vita is still worth it. I like the Vita. I like the games. I like still being connected to the PlayStation Network. Still gaining trophies. And, hey, if you, if you look, if you look, there are still a couple of games here and there that you can get on PS4 on your PS5, which still have a Vita version when you purchase it, because it did back in the day. So just keep an eye out for that when you're purchasing. It's a few, but there are some out there. So always keep out uh, an eye out for that. That might uh, benefit your uh, PS Vita collection in the future. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Thank you for listening to me ramble and my opinions and my uh, seeing my collection of the PS Vita and letting you guys know just that I still think it's worth it. Thank you so much. Again, follow us on our socials. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share this video, uh, follow us on our socials, and like we always say, be legendary. Thanks again.